what they told us we were doing was going to rid the state of frivolous lawsuits. So we said, okay, let's vote for this. Leading up to the 2003 effort in Texas, the insurance companies primarily, but also the medical industry, started this drumbeat. They were alleging that medical malpractice lawsuits were soaring and the cost of healthcare was going way up. And they barraged the citizens of Texas with these frightening, scary messages that we were in some sort of crisis. But the reality was that simply wasn't true. One of the things I think the public doesn't fully understand is that lawsuits are about a lot more than just seeking compensation for an individual uh, plaintiff. By giving damages to the individual, the jury is sending a message about safety to the doctors, the nurses, the hospital. Please change your ways. Make healthcare safer to protect all of us. Bill and Kelly Putnam experienced a nightmare scenario. They're in the nursing home with their father, the nurse administers medication improperly. As a result, he started to choke on the medication and Kelly was forced to provide CPR on her father while staff at the nursing home did nothing. I was probably six inches away from my dad's eyes. He's no longer thrashing, he's no longer moving. And so they took him to the hospital, they worked on him, cause of death, aspiration. Texas Board of Nursing ruled that the nurse not only did what we said she did, but she also said that the facility had her destroy the medical records for that day and create a new version. I decided to give a lawyer friend a call. I went through probably 10, maybe more. All of them I got the same letter back, stating that because of tort reform, we cannot afford to litigate these types of cases. What the 2003 restrictions did was make it economically unfeasible for most attorneys to take most medical malpractice cases. It's a cynical attempt to make it harder for people to go to court by making it harder for them to get representation. I do remember when Patricia Whitman first contacted me because as a cardiologist, I was pretty outraged when I looked at the medical records. Patricia Whitman visited the emergency room complaining of chest pains. They look at her EKG. Doctor says, no, you've got indigestion, go home. The symptoms persist. Next day she goes in, sees a different physician. She's been having a heart attack. Anyone looking at the CKG in a patient with chest pain has to consider that that patient is having an acute heart attack until proven otherwise. All of these abnormalities were essentially ignored and a diagnosis of uh, acid reflux was made in Patricia Whitman's case, and that was the wrong diagnosis. The doctor came in and he said that I had substantial permanent heart damage and that I was, quote unquote, 100% disabled. Prior to the heart attack, I had a 3,500 square foot home that I took care of and I was on my feet eight hours a day going to cosmetology school. Then I would come home and cook for my kids and do whatever else needed to be done. I did it all. After the heart attack, I couldn't keep up with the house. I couldn't pay the mortgage. My life has changed a lot. I will never be able to do what I used to do. I have to depend on five heart medications that I have to take every day in order to survive. This is a letter from one attorney. It would be difficult to prove that the ER physician's conduct rose to the level of gross negligence. No attorney would take my case. Tort reform involved a specific passage of language that said that a simple negligence standard no longer applied to emergency room care in Texas. 
The new standard was a gross negligence standard called willful and wanton uh, negligence. You have to prove in court that that doctor saw me walk through the door and said, that's my next victim. And of course that doesn't happen. And so uh, people like Patricia Whitman who find themselves in the emergency room and are misdiagnosed or harmed face almost no ability for accountability. If you look back and you break down the arguments made by the insurance companies and medical industry about the cost, quality, access of healthcare in Texas, by every metric, we're worse off today than we were 10 years ago. It has made life better and easier for a small group of corporate interests at the expense of the rest of us. These corporations, they have no fear because they know that they're not gonna be held responsible. It shouldn't be about money. But unfortunately, that's the only language these people speak. That's why we're out protesting. We will stand out on the street in front of the facility with signs that state what happened and make sure that they understand that we're not going to go away and that what they did was wrong. We must restore meaningful accountability in this state so that another family does not go through the same nightmare that they've been through. If enough people in the public say enough is enough, then politicians have to think twice. We're never going to be able to compete with the special interests in terms of campaign contributions and money. Where we have to compete with them is in boots on the ground. The more people that rise up and say, we want our rights back, then they have to think about it. And once we've made them think about it, then half the battle is won.